Welcome guys, one more time to an artist interview. For today's interview, I got a very special guest. This person I have a deep admiration for. She is what I would uh, define as a scholar in her craft. Please help me welcome Miss Charles Brew. How are you today, Miss Brew? Hi, Camilo, I'm just fine. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So what we do here is that we try to give aspiring artists little nuances of how to make it. First, I would like to do is to start off with a little introductions. Can you tell us a little bit about your life, where you grew up, classes that you've taken, and what helped you become the artist that you are today? I grew up in a military family, so I moved quite a bit and traveled a lot uh, when I was a kid. Because of all the traveling that I did, I got to spend a lot of time with my grandparents, my especially my grandmothers, and they were both pretty big artists. A paternal grandmother was a published poet, painter, and she also sewed. For example, my father liked to rebuild cars, and she completely sewed all of the interior for the for one of the cars that he built. Um, and then also my my maternal grandmother uh, was a very good cook and quilter, sewer, and knitter. She did more what a lot of people describe as domestic um, projects, but her quilts were very famous <laughs> and they both taught me everything that they knew. So I grew up playing the piano, making art, sewing. Um, I was always making clothes for my dolls and eventually for myself. And uh, obviously I stuck with art. So I'd have to say that they were the biggest influences in my life. As far as classes go, I have um, uh, three master's degrees in my field and they're all in different areas. So I have, but, but they're all in fine, well, I guess the last one's not fine arts. Uh, it's in animation with the focus on storyboarding. Another one is in um, digital mixed media and another one is in uh, sculpture and art history. So I've had a lot of drawing a lot, a lot of drawing. I, I used to think that, oh, if I took this master's, then when I go to get my next master's, I won't have to take these other classes, won't have to take these other classes. <laughs> and then I end up, you know, taking them and learning a lot. I mean, for example, I learned that there's a big difference in styles between the East Coast and the West Coast um, and in, in how, they're, how drawing is taught. So I've had a real opportunity to delve into lots of different techniques, lots of different processes. Um, I can screen print, uh, etch, aquatint, phot photography, painting, drawing, sculpture. You know, there's not a process that I haven't learned. Still taking classes. I'm taking a book dummy making course right now. So I've already taken master classes in how to actually construct and make books. But this is a book on the history and process of making a children's book and all of the whole thing from the editor's side, the publisher side, the agent side, the printer side, everybody, the illustrator, the writer, every author, everybody's different roles in getting a children's book made. So I continue to learn more things that I can not only pass along to my students, but help me with the work that I do. Amazing. Wow. All right. So from a family of artists to becoming an artist yourself and now study the craft to that point that is like knowing every single nuance is that is very, very impressive. So are you currently working in any project that maybe you can talk to us about? Well, um, yeah. <laughs> um, right now I'm finishing up my second uh, children's book. Uh, the first book that I did, I published myself. And then I just got this bug in me that just I just really want to get a book published by a publisher. And um, it's not, you know, it's not a big money making thing, um, but I don't care because it's really making me happy. It's just making my day every day showing up, showing up for work and working on my book is a thrill. Um, it's called Too Much Pink. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about two little cows 
who uh, want to enter a contest. It's a fashion contest. And the contest is to make a, a bow, you know, for their hair. And they start off wanting to buy the bow, but they can't afford it. And um, so they have to figure out a way how to get, make, or somehow conjure up a bow for this contest. So that's what the book is about. Amazing. Thank you also for sharing those beautiful images of development of that <laughs> project. And, and, and I knew uh, the title. That's why today the, the, the shirt was not a mistake. I actually thought of about, uh, oh, really? Let me see what I can do here. All right. So out of all the projects that you've done, it seems like that one obviously fulfills you. Is that the one that you're most happy with? I am most happy with whatever project I'm working on in the moment. I care about the outcome and I certainly have a goal in mind for my projects, a bigger goal outside of myself. I try not to think about the bigger goal too much. This book is really, uh, it's occupying my every waking moment in a good way. Right. Uh, it's kind of funny this morning, um, I was out walking my dog, which is kind of how I start my day. And I was talking to her about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. You know, it's like, now, what do you think Bobby and Bev should do, you know, here and there, you know, just things like that. And, and my little dog, she always turns around when she hears me talking, she always turns around and looks at me like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Tell me more. Um, so she's, she's great. She's a big supporter. <laughs> In order for you to kind of stay motivated uh, through that, because these long projects sometimes can feel like a little bit of a drag. It doesn't sound like you run into that issue, but can you tell us a little bit about that creative process in your day to day? Well, I actually started writing this book four years ago. So um, it's gone through, well, I number the iterations of the manuscript. It's gone through 40 in iterations. And I'm in a group that does, it's a critique group that I meet with on a regular basis. So I get feedback from three or four other people um, on the manuscript. And in March of 2021, I finally got the, yay, you know, the thumbs up. That's the manuscript is good. Really start getting that book dummy done. And uh, it was funny not funny, really not funny, uh, <laughs> because I just went into a downward spiral for some reason. The, 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 the manuscript was done and I got, I, I guess, I guess you can kind of say I got scared, mm. um, to start actually putting the book together, to start doing the illustrations and putting the book together. And I started kind of filling my life with, uh, I don't know, little monthly challenges, uh, um, doing hand studies, feet studies, uh, mm -hmm. taking on a private student or, you know, doing anything except working on the book. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, then I got a little down about it because I felt like, oh, I'm spinning my wheels. I'm really not doing anything. And my work is going nowhere. And um, I just, I, I started posting less on Instagram and um, just, not feeling really good about anything I was doing. Mm. And I think because in the back of my mind, I had this project I was thinking about and wondering why the heck aren't you working on this? And I really, I mean, for all the folks out there who are struggling, because I, I've talked about this kind of thing with a lot of different artists and we all go through it. Yeah. All I can say is thank God for my drawing group because I voiced my feelings in the drawing group one night and everybody was really nice. You know, uh, you know, to be, to, to be honest, a lot of people will go, Oh no, you're great. Everything you do is great. Blah, blah, blah. And it was good to hear, but when, and you guys can identify with this when you're in one of those moods, you can't take that kind of stuff in mm -hmm. because you know, you're not producing the way you would like to be. And then finally, one of my former students at the end of the drawing session, everybody had gone and it was just she and, 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 and I, or me. And she said, Mrs. Brew, she said, you need to stop everything that you're doing that's keeping you from doing the thing that you want to do. 
oh my gosh, I started crying. Wow. <laughs> I might still cry. And mm -hmm. this is coming from my student. I said, I said, oh my gosh, how did you get to be so wise? And she said, one of my favorite teachers told me that for about four years while I was in college. And it was me she was talking about. Wow. Went, Holy cow. Full circle. Okay. Full yeah. circle. <laughs> yeah, full circle. I, I did take a couple days. I just took a couple days to think about it and to, not that there was really a lot to think about, but I needed to regroup and I need to, needed to have a plan. So then I remembered a book that I read called A War on Art by Stephen Pressfield. Um, I should actually list it here because it's a fantastic book. If you wanna get motivated, that's the book to read. He just talks about resistance and how it's our worst enemy as artists. Mm -hmm. And that you've got to, sh you're, are you, and he asked the question right at the beginning, are you a pro or are you an amateur? Right. And a pro shows up for the job every darn day. Right. And so I just started showing up for the job. And the first day when I started doing the thumbnails, for the first spread, everything clicked. It, not that the, I'm not saying that the thumbnails were great, okay? Don't get me wrong. I am talking about the feeling that right. I had sitting here working on this stuff. And at yes. the end of the day, it was about, I don't know, I think I got in here around nine o'clock and then I was done around five. I felt like I was walking on air. I really did. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that's helpful to people out there who oh, are. Oh my God. Absolutely. And and there were so many points that you touched on, which I believe are so important for any of us artists who really wants to make it. And for us who have that passion, I mean, just feeling scared, maybe sometimes overwhelmed with the task, just we try to escape it for whatever reason, instead of confronting that fear, going head on, we, we try to do other things and literally preoccupy ourselves with. Uh, I totally relate when working on my comic book, same exact thing. I will feel so bad in any time we have to go anywhere, like travel on the car for long periods of time, because I'll be like, I should be working. I shouldn't be here. You know, I should be enjoying, but I'm not enjoying this because I know I, there's a project pending that I should be working on. And instead of doing that, I'm doing this other activity. And yes, I agree. Once you break through that barrier, tackling that fear head on and is, is extremely valuable. You also talked about the inspirations. Do you have any other artists uh, that you would like to maybe emphasize that maybe you use as inspirations? So many and some that you might not even think would be uh, an inspiration for this kind of project, a children's book. This book right here by Molly Bang, it's called Picture This. And it's really talking about the anatomy of a picture. And she describes it just using shapes and placement and composition. So it's also a reminder of your basic elements and design. Uh, so that's been an inspiration to me. There's another book, Real Worlds, I think Real Worlds. It's an old book, but it's been around forever. But it's another book that's very similar to this. The Art of Big Hero 6. Some of my favorite illustrators, Lee White, um, in one of his recent books. And just looking at compositions, um, a style, uh, you know, that appeals to children is very, is very helpful. Going way back to Nancy Shaw, Sheep in a Jeep, <laughs> you know, and I, I've got just to, just to let you know that no matter how, how good you think you are, you still need your anatomy books. <laughs> I'm working on cows, right? Go. Oh. There we go. And even though they're stylized and they're cute little fun cows and they're three heads tall and you know that kind of thing, I still want them to be believable. I want the verisimilitude there. I want that that suspension of disbelief. Okay. Mm. So I mean the list goes on. The list mm. goes on. So I don't I don't want to I don't want to um, you know overwhelm. But yes inspirations yes for sure you. but you know you were talking about feeling bad camilo about going to a family outing and because you feel like you're supposed to be working no you love being with your family right Absolutely. and i know i think the same thing and then on the other hand though those kinds of outings can actually be inspiration for you when you get back into your studio Absolutely. Uh, because you might see a scene you know, of some people talking, or you might hear somebody say something, or you might hear a, a, a tune 
being played. You know, I don't know if they, you know they have music. You know how you have music mm -hmm. at these events sometimes, and and you think, well, for me, I'll think, oh my gosh, I could totally do that for scene whatever or page mm -hmm. whatever. You know, and I quickly, I know it's, I quickly get out my cell phone and open up my notes and type it down really quick so that I don't forget because those inspirations are fleet, they're fleeting, right? Yes. They're like butterflies. They're here and then they go. Yes. So um, I can come home and then I can go back and I'll go, oh, what was that thing? And then I, then I can look it up and, mm -hmm. and um, get it down. So I, I don't discount wherever the journey takes me at all. And I try not to let it um, upset me if I'm not in my studio, but kind of absorb what's around me so that it continually is feeding me um, when I get here. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and most often than not, right, stepping out of the studio, um, you know, it helps, it helps out just to be in a different environment. And yeah, I agree. Once I come home, I'm I'm going for it. I'm, I'm, I'm even like, you know, so motivated because I'm like, okay, you know, enough party or, you know, enough time away, let's go ahead and tackle this. Yeah. And, you know, that can be as a, you know, that can hurt, self, serve as motivation too. Very good. So um, another thing that I would like to touch on that you mentioned is having a group that will give you feedback. Talk to us a little bit more about that because I feel that is so important. How has it helped you? It's uh, almost more than words can describe how grateful I am to not only my drawing group, but my critique group. And uh, it does take effort to do it. You know, there's this myth out there that artists work alone and, mm. um, and they don't. I started this drawing group uh, probably about four years ago. And it's taken every single bit of that time to build up a group that comes regularly. So if you're gonna, if you if you want a group and you don't have one, start one. And it's it it might be a little bit slow. There might just be you and one other person, but it doesn't matter. That's one other person that you have to bounce ideas off of. And even if you're not in a situation where you're, so for example, I have two work groups. I have a drawing group where I, we've hired a model or several models, and and we draw for an hour once a week. A lot of people are very busy, but it's amazing what an hour of deep practice can do for everything else that you're doing away from that group. Then I have another group that's called the art scene, and we get together every Friday for an, another for an hour. Mm. And we have discussions about art books. We have discussions about careers. We draw or we share projects that we work on. But we do start with talking about what projects are you working on now? It's it's not a pressure thing. It's just a reminder because some people, they start a project and then they just, you know, somehow can't keep working on it for some reason. So if you, if you talk about it, you're actually, you're not, you're, you're actually not only making a commitment to yourself, you're kind of making a commitment, commitment to your group. So you have that control group going on there. And you've said out loud, oh, I'm going to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And so it does put a little, little bit of pressure on you to, 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 to stick with it. Um, whatever the project is, it could be a 30-day challenge. It could be a two-day challenge. I'm going to draw hands for two days and see how many hands I can draw for, for two days or something mm -hmm. like that. So these groups have been really great. And then I'm in groups that I didn't start. I'm in critique groups with uh, pros who are working in children's books and illustrations. So I get feedback from them and I get to give feedback as well. Nice. Um, it's kind of funny. The one person I was working with told somebody else enough times that they really enjoyed the group. And mm -hmm. then that person came. And so it, it was just, it just builds from there.
Mm -hmm. Very nice. And it is in it. There's so many benefits, right? To just being able to hear different voices, um, you know, and their opinions about your art. Because like you said, uh, none of us really work in a vacuum. And if you do, then 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 that's probably wrong at some point because you ain't got nobody guiding you. Um, and it's not that it's wrong, like that maybe that's not the right word here. Well, not but healthy for your art. Not as healthy, absolutely. Because see, that's the danger of, of having, uh, you know, being able to do so many different processes. Everything is interesting, right? right. So mm -hmm. uh, I have to be, I have to be focused. Otherwise, I would be looking at that painting over there on my wall and going, oh, you know, I, I would really like to do this, but I'm supposed to be working on this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no distraction, 100% commitment on the current project. Very try good. to, try to. But yeah, I'm really loving this. I'm really loving this book. And I'm actually, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of interesting because I'm in the hard part. The hard part is sitting down and doing the research and um, cranking out the, the thumbnails. And sometimes you like sometimes I hit on an idea that I think is really great. And I want to do at least eight to ten thumbnails, at least. OK, okay. Right. <laughs> I'll get an idea and I just keep drawing the same darn thing over and over again. So I have to switch it up by uh, changing the perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'll go from a one and a half point perspective to a three point perspective looking uh, uh, looking down or a three point perspective looking up. And it forces me to sort of change change things up a bit, even if it's the same scene from a different perspective. And then I kind of have to think about, whoa, uh, here, here's here's what this page is about. Here's what the story of this page is about. Um, does this looking down shot uh, work here? Because right. I think of a looking down shot as a God shot. Mm -hmm. And so it's giving, it's it's putting the, the character a little bit away from us and we're we're sort of looking down on the scene like, you know, we're, right. we're the judge or something. Mm -hmm. and so is it working for that scene? And so then I, once I get enough of those thumbnails together, I can look and, pick which one or which combinations of one or two or three will fit that that scene at that moment in the story. Right, right, absolutely. And I think sometimes, you know, as artists, we tend to um, spend so much time just developing our projects, thinking about all those things. And a lot of people don't realize how tough it is to actually produce, uh, you know, anything, especially when it comes down to that storytelling producing that storytelling, it can be so tedious. Um, I think that um, some people don't really see the value on it, right? Especially when we're doing like maybe freelance jobs or something like that, where they don't realize, hey, you know, that one scene could take us as simple as four hours or as simple as four months just to get it just right so that it tells the story because there's so much work that happens behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, that whole, I mean, as you can see, I've already, I was able to just pull right from around me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different reference books that I've got mm -hmm. with me. And then I have videos too that I, that I watch for reference. I've got Sherm Cohen's um, storyboarding. Um, I've got SpongeBob. I've got, you know, other uh, flushed away because flushed away, there's a great closet scene. And my story has a lot of fashion in it. And the girl is wishing for a closet big enough to feature all of her sneaker collection, right? And there's such a great closet scene in flushed away. So I have just got piles of videos and I can just reach and stick it in and, and, and watch that as a, as a reference. Um, you can't get, tied up in the movie you really have to use it for the purpose that you're, <laughs> that you're doing but um yeah so that is where i can't be listening to to music or it's distracting when i'm doing this development work right um it's when i get to drawing the fun stuff doing the final drawing um or the under drawing and doing the the painting and stuff like that where i can have music or i can have a movie on or something like that while I while I'm working because all the hard head stuff is 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 done. That is very true. Um, I actually myself 
it's almost like I had to got out of that habit. And it was by total mistake. You know, um, I would have, uh, maybe when I'm producing, I will have some music on the background. Eventually that music will stop and I will keep going and going. And I actually noticed that our attention gets a little bit divided. Even when we have something on the background, it's still divided. It's not like a hundred percent. And I agree when I'm doing a lot of the thumbnails or maybe the important, you know, uh, hard parts of a project, I tend to just have absolutely full concentration on what I'm doing with nothing else playing on the background. I feel that if you're a starting artist and you've never tried that, I would encourage you to give it a go. Have no distractions whatsoever, uh, especially if you're a student and you might see a good change, you know, a positive uh, impact in your art. I, I, I totally agree. And there's probably a lot of uh, people out there listening who are saying, oh, I, I can't work unless I have my music on. And I'm always encouraging my students to unplug, but there's really good times to, to have music. So for example, um, in my drawing groups, uh, we have these wonderful models that uh, do costumes um, for the long poses and they're very character driven. So, you know, I'll put on actually soundtracks from some of these movies. The, the soundtrack for those movies are really good at helping you think in terms of character. It often will inspire me quite a bit while I'm doing very fast, almost, I, I guess, conceptual work. Mm -hmm. um, that's a nice time to have some sort of outside uh, influence or inspiration, you know, uh, coming in. And like you were like you were saying, when you get to the hard parts where you really need to do deep work and you need to have deep thinking going on and deep practice going on, um, it's good. It's a good time to have quiet because then your mind can really focus on those things that you're that you're trying to trying to get out. And it does take a lot of thinking, believe me, um, mm -hmm. when you're designing something. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Ruth, thank you so much. Before we call it, um, do you have maybe some words of wisdom for any artist, any pro tips you would like to share? Let's see. So pro tip number one, uh, you're not alone. You're not alone in your feelings about your work and about your art. It, it's I, I've been absolutely amazed in the last, say, four months of the number of artists that I've talked to that feel, think, and are going through the same things that I'm going through. My second tip would be uh, get yourself in a group and commit to it. Don't let resistance come up. You know the minute that you commit to a, di a diet, right? That's the minute mm -hmm. that your husband or your girlfriend comes home with a bag of Fritos. <laughs> Yes. Because exactly. resistance is there and whenever you're trying to do something it seems like the world it just gangs up on you and is trying to keep you from doing that i would say get yourself in a group and commit to it and get to know the people that you're working with and create a relationship there and um so the third thing would be to show up for the job every day make a specific time every single day that you are going to either work on a project or do a drawing, something like that. Be kind to yourself at first, like start with 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Like it's called the five minute rule. You set the timer for five minutes, you end up working for three hours, but yeah. <laughs> you're gonna forget about that. But yeah, just set the timer and commit to it and get in the habit within 21 days, you'll be in the habit. And then the fourth and final one is to do a challenge. Like Inktober is a great challenge to do, but don't worry about how you're drawing or what the drawing looks like or comparing it to other people. Don't do that to yourself yet, especially if you're just kind of starting out. Just you want to start by developing good habits. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Guys, get your support, get your people around you, then commit 100%. Do it. And finally, make sure to always and always keep pushing. Yeah. Don't, don't feel bad. There's plenty of time to feel bad, but you don't want to feel bad about your work. Look, look, everybody's got different styles. Camilo does comic books. I do children's book illustrations. Does that mean 
that my stuff has less value than Camilo's? Does Michelangelo's art have less value than Degas work? You know, no. And if you put the two together, you might go, oh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they're really different, right? right? So embrace what you're, what you, what you do, and what you can do, and um, it will, it will find its place, and um, you will find your place as well in that, in that whole scheme of things. So be encouraged. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miss Brewer. Appreciate it. It's been amazing spending this time with you. And you. yeah, we look forward to see and hear more about your uh, up and coming children's books. Real quick, if anybody has any questions, where can they reach you at? What social media do you use the most? Um, the social media I use the most is my Instagram. And I am, uh, you know, I'm out of my dark mood, so I am posting more. And I am posting my uh, thumbnails and my references and my underdrawings on on uh, Instagram now. And I think it does get posted to Facebook, but they can DM me anytime they want. If they're interested in coming to the drawing group, they can uh, DM me for that and get my email and I will send them a link. The uh, same with the uh, art scene. Everybody's looking for an art scene, and uh, that's on Friday. So, uh, yeah, just contact me through Instagram. Yes, all the links are below, so make sure to check it out. Again, you have here a well of knowledge. So, guys, take advantage of it. Ruth, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.